everybody. It is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am killing two birds with one stone. I'm recovering from an injury and, um, hang on one second. And so I'm just now today able to get back. That's the people. Okay. Uh, just able now to get back exercising again i'm taking it very very slow so for those of you who are new for me i'm going to step on the side here for safety so i am going to be walking i hope it doesn't bother you on my treadmill which i have turned into a walking desk i'm able to work from here so i injured my back last week ended up in the ed thinking i may have had a herniated disc thank you jesus no herniated disc just a pretty bad sprain back sprain um and it laid off for several days. Here, I'm gonna set up my little phone holder thing again. Um, so today's the first day I'm back and I'm taking it really easy walking on my treadmill. So today, I wanted to come on and do a all over, um, you are in charge of this talk today. It's a menopause, perimenopause question and answer section. So if you, um, let's see. I'm going to answer the public uh, menopause, okay, uh, right now, because these are the most common uh, Googled um, questions about menopause, but I wanted to give you guys time in the comments um, or here in the interact button to ask as many questions as you want. If you have someone who you think will benefit from this, please, please, please uh, feel free you search okay uh, to, uh, feel free to um, share this video so there's a share button right here and there's an interact button so if you're just joining me we've got about 300 people double tap the screen to like the video this helps drive the algorithm you just tap 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 like this and um, okay great questions coming in keep them coming keep them coming we're at over 300 people watching, listening. So if you don't know who I am, TikTok makes me stop. And um, let's see, here we go. I've got all the top questions on Answer the Public. Um, so I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I also am a certified nutritionist and I've married my two passions for women's health and nutrition, you know, into a space that I love working in, coaching um, women in midlife, utilizing you know nutrition, exercise, possible supplements and prescriptions to maximize their health and wellness. Um, so I uh, am reading your questions. Make sure um, if you you know you can drop them in the interact button in the questions down here below. So uh, welcome to my live. Okay. Um, and everyone double tap the screen, keep going to like the video. Everybody give me 10 taps real quick. That helps drive this silly algorithm. Um, keeps me relevant on this platform. We're at 489 visitors. So I am board certified in obstetrics and gynecology. Thanks for asking. And if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I um, have a walking desk and I'm recovering from an injury. So I'm gonna be walking if you're wondering why I'm kind of moving around uh, while, I'll, while I answer your question. So how do you know if you need Hormone replacement therapy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, cat with triplets, cat with triplets for asking this question. How do you know? The thinking behind whether or not you need hormone replacement therapy is really undergoing a revolution, okay? Back in the days when I trained, so I was a resident uh, in obstetrics and gynecology from 1998 to 2002. And the only reason that we gave hormone replacement therapy back then was to alleviate the common symptoms of menopause. Um, we did not routinely give HRT in perimenopause. We had to wait till your period stopped, okay? A year after your last period before we could offer you any treatment options. And we only did it if you had severe hot flashes, night sweats. That was pretty much it, okay? Those were the only reasons. A lot of people who trained at the same time I did are locked into that thinking. They have not participated in any continuous medical education of, as far as perimenopause and menopause. And I have to say, we are all, if you're board certified, you are required to recertify every year via reading articles and stuff. And when I tell you there are almost 
No. In the last two years, there have been not one article on perimenopause and menopause that we were required to read and learn something new to keep up with our training and education. So a lot of docs, healthcare providers, nurse practitioners, whatever, get locked into what was they were taught at that time. Thank you for the likes, everyone. Keep those likes coming. Uh, just double tap the screen to like the video. They are locked into what they were taught 20, 30 years ago, and they do not change, okay? So, back then, the only reason to give a woman hormone replacement therapy was to make her hot flashes go away and her night sweats. That was pretty much it. We knew that her bones would be stronger, but we have other medications for that, which are toxic as shit, by the way. Um, hard to take, but... Um, so... Now, with the latest information coming out, when you go into, if you go into PubMed, which is my Bible, okay, um, it is the National Institutes of Health creates a database of recent medically, you know, verified journal articles that come out, you know, and you go, menopause and heart disease, tons of stuff from like the cardiology reviews, menopause and autoimmune disease, tons of stuff from endocrinology, menopause and depression, menopause and uh, arthritis, menopause and gastrointestinal disease. Menop and so you're seeing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again all of these correlations with these massive increases in risks of disease that happens when a woman's estrogen level starts dropping. Menopause and body composition changes, menopause and inflammation, menopause. So now, HRT, is something you should consider for your health, for your long-term health. We know two things you must realize. The earlier you go through menopause naturally, without hormone replacement therapy, so you go through at 45, you're on the young end, 42, 43, you're definitely on the younger end, still normal, but young. Your risk of all-cause mortality is much higher than a woman who stopped her periods at 55 because you had a shorter time to be exposed to estrogen. As it turns out, estrogen, natural estrogen made by your ovaries, is highly protective against multiple disease states. Heart disease, chronic hypertension, diabetes, stroke, you know, the top leading causes of death. So now, the data is coming out that women who choose HRT as young as possible, including perimenopause, are doing better health-wise. Now, once they stop HRT, those risks creep back up, but they're 20 years ahead of the game than the woman who went through at 45, okay? Nothing's better than your natural ovary production of your eggs making estrogen, okay? HRT is a close second, so I, I don't want to... You know, HRT is not perfect. It doesn't do everything right. And when I say HRT, I am talking about estrogen. In medicine, when we talk about hormone therapy, it is estrogen. You all, with progesterone, we are not talking about testosterone. Get that out of your head. Testosterone is a whole nother animal. The only thing we know it might be good for for a few people is libido, okay? Maybe, and only in a postmenopausal woman. So I'm not talking about health benefits of heart disease, diabetes, cardiovascular risk, stroke, all of it. When I, when I say HT, throw testosterone out of your mind. That is not what we are talking about, okay? So who needs hormone therapy? In my opinion, everyone. Everyone if you're a good candidate. And if your doctor tells you, I don't believe in hormones, find a new doctor. It's not Santa Claus. I can quote you a thousand studies. I can give you, but I cannot change their mind for you. I am working on building a database of menopause-friendly providers. You deserve at least the conversation. You don't have to take it. It's like antibiotics. You get sick, you have pneumonia. You don't have to take the antibiotic, but your life's gonna be a hell of a lot better and you're gonna recover quicker if you do. But you have the option not to take it. That's your right, that's your choice. But at least you got the freaking conversation. If your doctor refuses to have the conversation with you about the risks and benefits of hormone therapy, you deserve a different conversation. Okay? If they have not kept up with the latest data on the actual risks of cancer, estrogen alone does not increase your risk of breast cancer. Let me say that again for those of you in the back. 
Estrogen alone, without progesterone, does not increase your risk of breast cancer in the WHI study. Does not. Okay. All right. So, do you need hormone replacement therapy? Do you think you need it? I want to see in the comments. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you need it? Do you need it? Give me a double tap on the screen to like the video. Double tap if you feel like you deserve a conversation about hormone replacement therapy. Do you deserve it? Okay, how do you know if you're in the early menopause stage? So we're talking about perimenopause. Okay, this is an excellent question. Hang on, uh, my, um, my thing is getting wobbly. Let's see, is that better? Is it less wobbly? I don't know. Um, okay, the average age, so when we say menopause in medicine, menopause is the end of your period, your ovaries have died, they're done. They're not producing estrogen anymore, okay? The beginning of the decline of that process starts seven to 10 years before your period stops. That is perimenopause, the beginning of the decline of estrogen production from the ovaries. So it is very, very normal and expected. Do the math. So, so average is 51, 45 to 55 is still normal. Normal curve, 45. 45 minus 10 is 35. It is completely reasonable for a woman in her late 30s to begin to experience symptoms associated with perimenopause. We do not have a blood test, not the Dutch test. The Dutch test has never been proven to be accurate. Red flag, ladies, if you're being charged $400 for a blood test that only one lab in the entire world will run. I'm not a fan of the Dutch test. Urinary metabolites of estrogen have never, never, never been shown to be correlative to actual blood levels. Because our estrogen levels fluctuate like a bucking bronco on the Texas Twister at Astroworld, you cannot do a one-time blood test and say you're in perimenopause. That is not how it works. Our estrogen levels are doing this. They're trending down, but they're doing this. It just depends on when you check them. And quite often your lab test will come back normal, not menopausal. Doesn't mean you're not perimenopausal. We don't have a good blood test for that. How do you do it? How do you know? Well, first you have to have a doctor that gives a fucking shit, okay? Who will listen to you and acknowledge that your symptoms are real. If you feel immediately dismissed, immediately blown off, immediately undervalued, you're done with reproduction, Find a new doctor. I'm not throwing my profession under the bus so much because they are getting their asses kicked. Insurance pays for babies and pays for surgeries. It does not pay for long, intense conversations. We are a sick care system, not a health care system. I'm sorry, this is just economic reality. Having to search to find someone who cares, who will listen, Perimenopause is a diagnosis of exclusion. The blood tests that we tend to run are to rule out other things that look like perimenopause, like hypothyroidism, like autoimmune disease, like um, different forms of arthritis, like you know uh, lupus, like what should do I run? I run so much stuff. Okay, so rule out those things. Make sure you're not missing anything. There's also a perimenopausal scoring system validated by the Australasian Menopause Society and it is on my website. So if you go to Dr. Mary Claire up here, double click on that, scroll down at the link in bio, you will see, am I in perimenopause? Take the quiz. It will give you a score. It will ask for your email and I will send you a ton of information that you can take to your doctor's office that you can print out and say, here are my medication options, here are the things I want to discuss. Okay, and it is at galsondiet.com. Um, or I just go to the link in bio and it's there at the top of the page. Okay, uh, I got a lot of free stuff up there too. So everybody, oh, 24 shares, thank you so much. So if you're just joining me, hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. Yes, I'm on my treadmill working and talking. I am a creator and founder of the Galveston Diet. I'm also a board certified obstetrician gynecologist, menopause warrior, and certified nutritionist. Here, doing a live Q&A all about menopause, answering your questions to the best of my ability, uh, letting you know 
If I don't know the answer, I will look it up because that's the kind of scientist that I am. Um, and just trying to open this space and conversation so you don't so feel so damn crazy. Yes, this is happening. Yes, I believe you. Yes, I'm going through it myself. I was so freaking hot last night. I'm like, do I need to up my patch? Or is this just a one-time thing or did my patch go wonky? My HRT patch is down here. <laughs> I'm sweating down here. I need to put the fan on, but it gets too loud. So, um, all right. So I'm answering questions, answering questions. Hang on. Let's see. I have to scroll. Give me a second. Uh, do you know if there's such a thing? Oh, Lord, don't get me started on bio tea, you guys. If you want my opinion on bio tea, you're going to get it. Um, I've been in menopause for several years. Never had any medications for any symptoms. That is your right. Not everyone is a candidate for hormone therapy, but you run the risk of increasing other metabolic your your risk of, of health issues goes up if you choose not to do hormone therapy. Um, let's see, what kind of a doctor should you find? I wish I could tell you every board certified OBGYN is gonna be great at this, but they are under a lot of pressure to deliver babies, to do surgeries, to do procedures, to get people in and out. They're only being scheduled about eight minutes in face-to-face -face time per patient. And that is reflective, not of them as a human being, but of the healthcare system that we currently have. So really, Google's not gonna help you, Yelp's not gonna help you. Word of mouth is gonna help you. So I am working to build a database of menopause-friendly providers, completely free, not selling chart, I just, I can't be everyone's doctor. I would love to teach other doctors to do what I do in my clinic. It's one of my goals, but you know, I digress. I, if you go to the link up here at Dr. Mary Claire, oh, keep tapping, we're at 12,000. Likes, thank you very much. Keep tapping, tapping. So double tap the screen, everybody, quick, quick, quick. 10 times to like the video. It drives the algorithm, makes more people watch the video. Um, the at, if you go to the link in bio up here, Dr. Mary Claire, you see a bolded link at the top of my TikTok page, you will see refer your physician. Please fill out that form if you have an awesome menopause provider. That way it's gonna go into our database and then if some woman in your community, you're helping a sister out, is looking, all we're doing is just validating that they're actual physicians and they have an office. And they're gonna go into our database, we're working on the interface right now, so you can, you can search um, on your area. And we've had about 150 doctors referred so far, healthcare providers, some are nurse practitioners, whatever. But if you have a good one, if you have an awesome one, please, please, please help a sister out. Go to my referral link and please fill out a referral please, 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 so that you can help a sister in your community get the same excellent care that you have had. Okay, um, let's see. Having a hysterectomy soon, do you have any advice? Um, live as healthy as possible. You want your body in tip-top shape before any major, major, major surgery. Make sure you understand your risks. Make sure you understand the indications of this surgery. Women are having hysterectomies for no reason, okay? If your doctor is telling you, oh, oh, it's time, it's time to get your uterus out, you don't need it anymore, it's just gonna become cancerous, do you know that the complication risk from surgery is higher than the chance of you getting uterine or ovarian cancer? Do you know this? There are absolute indications for hysterectomy. I am shocked when I talk to patients in clinic for my entire career and I'm like, why'd you have a hysterectomy? And they're like, I don't know. The doctor just said it was time. And I'm like, I'm like, huh, huh, what? You know, I can't, if any of my patients came out and said that, talk, believe me, me talking about doing major, major surgery and removing an organ is an hour long conversation with a patient. <laughs> she better be damn sure she wants this done before I put her under to sleep and risk, risk her life and risk her losing organs outside of the uterus because of a complication. We better be damn sure we got no other option. So, okay, um, let's see, been in menopause. All right, I'm reading, all right, so please, 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 I'm gonna go to the questions, drop your menopause questions in the interact button. Um, do I recommend HRT eight years out for menopause? Absolutely, the North American Menopause Society says up to 10 years out. 
and definitely more if you're younger when you went through menopause. So 60 seems to be where they're starting to put the cutoff. Um, but I have an intense conversation with my patients and if they're post 60 and they're doing really well and they wanna keep going and they understand their risks, I give them the option. Um, radical hysterectomy due to cervical cancer on my second year of Keytruda, you've made, ask my gen op. Okay. Um, 100% we need to shift to preventative. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen to this woman, ladies. My doctor took care of this for me immediately. What type of doctor should I find? We just talked about that. Symptoms will stop, then come back. Yes, because your ovarian estrogen levels fluctuate in perimenopause. You will have a few shit weeks and then some really good weeks and then everything's normal and then you don't know what the hell's going on. It is not a steady state decline. Like I said, it is a bucking bronco on the Texas Twister as it declines. And we are all gaslit and told that we're crazy and get over it and everyone goes through it and it's a natural process and why can't you just deal with it? And that's what I say to that. Um, your doctor said you need progesterone not to get uterine cancer. Yes. So if you have a uterus, which most of us still do, I still have mine. She's still in there. She's real small now. Um, and you are on hormone therapy, you must have the addition of progesterone to protect the endometrial lining from developing hyperplasia and cancer. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I haven't slept well in weeks. Look, if anything drove me as fast as I could get hormone therapy, it was my lack of sleep. I even, sleep is life to me now. I even invested in one of these aura rings. Does anybody else have one? I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed. I'm, I don't work for them. I don't make any money from them. But, and it was like, when you talk about things that were expensive, but you do it again in a heartbeat, every piece of uh, workout equipment I have in here, including this treadmill, this, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so menopausal ladies, I want to know, <laughs> I want to see in the comments quick, what is something that you've spent too much money on, but you would absolutely do it again, that it's, it's changed your life for the better. I have to say this guy, the aura ring. I like data. I love data. I love points. This tells me all about my sleep, how many hours and minutes I'm getting in deep versus latent versus, and it gives me tips like stop drink, don't drink alcohol. You must have drank alcohol last night before battle. Yes. Okay. Look what it did to your sleep. You didn't, your sleep score is like 82. It could have been 95 if you would have just, you know, had some tea instead of your, you know, your herbal tea. Okay. I want to see what is your thing that you've spent a ton of money on. Your workout mirror, I love it, Aura Ring. It's O-U-R-A. It monitors my sleep, so I wear it. It's got these little sensors inside. You can see them lighting up. It monitors my temperature, my sleep, my movement, my heart rate, and it gives me scores and gives me suggestions and helps me, you know, try to, sleep is life. Sleep is life for the rest of my life. I will never, 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 um, ever uh, take sleep for granted again. Okay, latex mattress topper. Ooh, I love that. Neurofeedback, uh, let's see. What about an ablation? Love ablations, love ablations. But if you've had an ablation, you still need progesterone. If you have a uterus, um, let's see. Love your aura ring, Botox. Yeah, same, Botox. Uh, Bioidentical hormone therapy, okay. Let's talk about bioidentical hormone therapy. Are you talking about compounded bioidentical hormone therapy or are you just talking about regular bioidentical hormone therapy? I'm gonna piss some people off here, so get ready, okay? Bioidentical is simply another form of hormone replacement therapy. It is not better or safer or more efficacious than any other form of HRT. I like it, I prescribe it, but don't be lulled into some sense of safety or that it's superior or whatever. It's not, okay? It's just another form. I like it, okay? There are claims being made that bioidentical has magical properties. It does not. Compounded bioidentical hormone therapy is dangerous. Why? 
because the Food and Drug Administration does not regulate compounding labs. They have no testing done, none, okay? They have no oversight. So the FDA, I'm talking about pellets and some of the creams. The FDA went to the top 12 compounding pharmacies in the United States and secretly ordered for six months multiple options from their bioidentical compounded stuff, their pellets and their whatever, biased and triased, okay? There was a 34% discordance in what the manufacturer said was in the medicine than what was actually in the medicine. So those of you who are, you know, being lulled into this false sense of security that you're on the superior stuff, you're wrong. It's not better. It's probably not the dose you think you're getting and your doctor's doing all this unnecessary testing to tell you that, oh, you need more, you need less, whatever. We treat symptoms, okay? I am on a bioidentical FDA approved version in a patch. That's what I got, okay? That's my personal choice. But not because it's bioidentical. I don't give a shit about that. I care because it's a patch and it's easier for me because I forget. I'm in a puzzle and I forget shit. So I can't remember to take a pill every day. So it's easier for me to do a patch. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so we're gonna go to the questions. So everybody double tap the screen to like the video. Double tap the screen to like the video. Um, oh, we're at 25,000 likes. Okay, here we go. Oh, that was just how I felt about bio. Okay, pellets, guys, pellets. Pellets are not the BL end all. It's simply another form of HRT. Here is a red flag. You know that. There's a 34% discordance is what they say is in the pellets is what is actually in the pellets. There's no third party testing. There's no regulation. And doctors who are doing pellets tend to give ultra high super physiologic doses, which actually put you at higher risk. Okay. Not all, but most when the secret shoppers went out and tested it all that if your doctor is only offering you pellets, nothing else, not a prescription, not a cream, not go over here. And the only way you can pay for that pellets is with cash. That is a red fucking flag. It's not better. It's not safer. And 34% chance what they say is in it is not in it. Proven by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay. The North American Menopause Society and the American College of ob are down on pellets. Why? Why did this have to be created? It is marketing to take money from you. If your doctor is not offering you other options and saying that this is the best, safest way to go, you need to run. Their job is to offer you everything available to you. And then if you choose pellets, go for it. That's your money. You spend your money on what you want. I don't care. But remember, it's not better, it's not safer, and it's probably not the right dose. A third of the chance it is not the right dose. Why didn't they offer you a $20 prescription? You can get oral hormone therapy for about 20 bucks a month. Did you know that? And you don't like it. You stop taking it that day, you're done. Go try something else. You're not stuck with those pellets for months. Okay? That is how I feel about that. Okay. Um, okay. When you start hormone therapy, any kind, patches, pills, rings, pellets, whatever. When you start, when your body sees estrogen... After not having seen it for a while, it is very, very, very normal and expected to have some spotting. You still need to call your doctor and report it. Make sure you're not missing anything. But it is absolutely a known and recognized side effect that you will have some spotting when you start hormone therapy with estrogen. Normal. Last about six months, tends to go away. We don't get too worried about it. But we need to know. You must call your doctor. Okay? Um, the belly bloat and weight gain is driving you crazy, okay? This is one of the most, the body, when we talk about body composition changes, we're talking about where and how you store fat. This is a known, documented, expected change in a woman's body beginning in perimenopause. That the weight gain will shift from your hips uh, from what used to be a pear shape for most women, unless you have polycystic ovarian syndrome and insulin resistance, you go into a more insulin resistant state 
and you start having abdominal fat gain where you've never had it before. That is kind of the pathophysiology. Absolutely, this happens. If you notice this happening and you don't change what you're doing, I know it's worked for you for 20 years. I know you've had that body for 20 years. Everything was fine. You could like diet back into those genes, no problem. Then all of a sudden, this shit starts happening. You must change. This is the one thing the Galveston diet taught me. Focusing on foods rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. Avoiding foods that are pro-inflammatory, okay? Making sure you're getting enough fiber every day. Making sure you're getting, you're not overindulging in added sugars every day. And I have specific guidelines for this in our program. Making sure you're getting the right kind of exercise every day, okay? Making sure that you are fueling your body. And, you know, they're, they're the hormones that control where and how you store fat are insulin and cortisol. Not estrogen. Not testosterone. Well, uh, not estrogen. Testosterone, those of you who are on T, bio T, will drive fat to the abdomen. It will. Documented. Absolutely. They don't tell you that when they put those pellets in you that you will start having a new onset of abdominal fat gain of intra-abdominal fat gain, and that intra-abdominal fat is metabolically active, drives inflammation, and you end up in this negative feedback cycle. The number one reason why I have not tried testosterone is I am terrified what it is going to do to my visceral fat. So if you want to learn more about the nutritional program, go to Dr. Mary Claire up there in the upper left, click on the link in bio. We have lots of great resources for you for free. 15% off on all of our programs. You just tick tock 15, T-I-K-T-O-K-1-5. Go check it out there for you. We have 71,000 students now enrolled in our programs. 71,000 menopausal women, killing it, killing it. So, okay. Um, remember, if you have questions, drop them in the questions down here. Is going on the, oh, this is such a good question. Oh, I love this question. Okay, is going on the pill the same as HRT? Yes. Kind of. Um, most of my patients who are perimenopausal, because we need that higher dose to override what the ovaries are trying to do while they're sputtering during this jalopy phase, you know, we, most of my patients do beautifully well on a low dose birth control pill. I got 50 options, it's cheap. They've usually been on something in the past that I know that they know will work well with their system. If it doesn't work, we switch them to something else, but it does everything it needs to to support you through your perimenopause. Then once we can document full menopause, ovaries have shut down, you're done, then we go to the traditional HRT levels or HT level, postmenopausal levels, which are about a quarter of the dosages that we would use. So I know a lot of you, I see so many comments. My doctor only ordered, oh, gave me birth control pills. My da -da 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 -da. Guys, you can't unfuck perimenopause. It's not gonna happen. You're breaking, it's breaking, okay? So you have to override it, okay? Because I see all these people who are like, get to the root cause of the problem. Your ovaries are dying. <laughs> that is the root cause. We're not going to resuscitate them. We can support them a little bit, but <laughs> there's going to die. You are going to go through menopause no matter what you do. We can change a little bit with environmental stuff, how early you go through. We can change definitely how severe your symptoms are, your like known symptoms, hot flashes, all that with nutrition and whatnot. But your ovaries are not going to survive. Every single one of you, 100% of you are going to go through perimenopause and menopause. You cannot avoid it. It is going to happen if you live long enough, if you are lucky enough to live long enough. My goal, and so I see all these like gurus and health coaches, get to the root cause of the problem. Stop covering up the symptoms. What the fuck are you going to do, lady? What are you going to do? Take some magic potion? <laughs> this, so yes, I am a huge fan. So your dog, oh, my doctor's only giving me birth control pills. That's a great option. That's a great option for so many of you. Okay? Because your health, by supporting your body, during this estrogen withdrawal, withdrawal stop, withdrawal stop, withdrawal stop, and this, this bumper car, crazy, crazy hormonal tsunami you're going through, this is a nice way 
to ease you through this transition. And then we talk about what we're going to do postmenopausal. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Um, okay. More questions? Just drop them down here. How do I find a duck like you? Um, okay, if you're in Texas or you're willing to travel to Texas, you can come and see me. But here's the deal. I am not a miracle worker. You have to be willing to put in the work. One of the questions you have to answer is, are you willing to make a change in your life? Are you willing to, to utilize nutrition, exercise, possible supplements, tracking your nutrition, knowing what you're putting in your body, um, and possible medications if we both deem that this is something that is interesting to you, okay? We're gonna get a ton of blood work. We're gonna look for autoimmune disease. We're gonna look for hypothyroidism. We're gonna check your kidney function and your liver function and inflammation levels. We're gonna make sure all of that is working well so that it's a holistic approach. I am, I want to train other people how to do what I'm doing because it's working. My patients, you guys, this, okay, two people came in last week for follow-ups, okay? Patient A, she lost like four pounds. Otherwise, I think she would have been freaking out, upset, depressed, whatever. Oh my God, I did all this work and only lost four pounds. Because you know what? Let go of the fucking scale because it is not a measure of your health, okay? This woman had gained three pounds of muscle and lost eight pounds of body fat. Her cholesterol was back to normal. Her triglycerides, back to normal. Her vitamin D levels are now optimal because she was highly deficient before. All in her visceral fat was down 21 points. I have a machine that allows me to measure muscle mass, visceral fat, and, and total body fat, and where the body water is, if they're inflamed. It's the coolest freaking thing I've ever done for my patients. This woman's indicator of, of health were all positive. Her total in body score, which is like a holistic score that looks at her age and weight, where the fat is and everything, went up four points. Like she is healthier. She doesn't care that she only lost three or four pounds. It's not what it's about. She's like, look at my clothes. Look at my pants. She's shaking her pants at me. I can tell. I feel good. I'm sleeping. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was crying. I was crying. This is why I do it. This is what I teach. This is what I preach. So, like everything in my life, everybody wants to know, what, what drug do I take? What do I do? What's the best exercise? What's the best whatever? You guys, everything I do for my health, my face, my skin, my beauty, my whatever, is multimodal. You cannot, there's not one fix. We are all genetically individual human beings, unless you have an identical twin out there. Okay? So I do all of it. I do everything. I do nutrition. I do every kind of exercise I can. Right now I'm walking, because I have a back injury and I'm trying to baby it. Um, uh, for my skin, I do vitamin C. I do Botox. I do... Peels, I do the uh, Morpheus, I mean, you know, like everything I do for my health, it's multimodal. It's not one thing. I wish, I wish, guys, I wish I could have the magic panacea, but that is not how life works, okay? You have to completely change your mindset, completely change your life. This is our lives together. All of us are going through this together, and together we can come up with solutions so that we can all be healthier. My patients don't come to me to fit in a bikini. My patients are coming with me because they want to play with their grandchildren. Because they're looking at their lives of their parents and their aunts and uncles, and they're like, I don't want that. I don't want to be decrepit. I don't want to be frail. I don't want to be so obese I cannot enjoy my life. Okay? That is the goals we start with. Where do you want to be in 20 years? Let's talk about that. If you want to diet into a revenge dress, go do keto or something. We are not, I am not a quick weight loss program. That is not what the Galveston Diet is about. That is not what Mary Claire Wellness is about. It is about your health for the long term. So how do you find me? Oh, 33,000 likes. All right, everybody double tap the screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're just joining me, I'm getting very passionate. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I'm also the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet, a wellness program for uh -oh, uh, menopausal women if you want to make an appointment to come see me you must come see me in my office in texas um people do travel i have a lot of we're booked out pretty far but you're welcome to try um you can get on the waiting list um 
If you, it's maryclairwellness.com or you can just go up to the link in my bio and uh, click up there and you can see uh, the make an appointment with Dr. Haver. I do do virtual visits, but you physically must be in the state of Texas and they're just not as good as uh, seeing me, being me being able to get your scan. It just gives me so much more information. Um, okay. Anything wrong with St. John's wort and black cohosh? So there is some very limited data that St. John's wort and black cohosh can be helpful for some women only for hot flashes. That's it. Hot flashes and night sweats, nothing else. Doesn't help with bone density, doesn't help with heart disease, stroke, any, any kind of intervention there. They do interact with a lot of other medications, okay? Uh, so be careful. Make sure if you're going to try some of that for the treatment of your hot flashes that you discuss this with your physician if you're on any other medications, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, what is the do oh, wait. What is the dose on my vitamin D fish oil supplement? Great, it's easy. So it's 2,000 international units per day for vitamin D, and it is 2,000 milligrams of fish oil, which is in DHA, EPA, and DHA and EPA, I think six and 400 each, or 800 and 400, plus um, ALA. So vitamin D at 2,000 per day is a maintenance dosing. This is not if you have a deficiency. This is if you're just trying to maintain your doses. How do you know if you're deficient? The only way to do that, really, is with a blood test. And for a postmenopausal woman, menopausal woman, we're looking at about an 85% risk that you are vitamin D deficient. Optimally, you want to be somewhere above 60 for optimal levels. So in my, and if you want to learn more about our supplements, I can tell you about it real quick. I have a combo vitamin D plus omega-3 fatty acid. So antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, and vitamin D is such an important hormone in our bodies. Yes, vitamin D is a hormone. Um, that so many of us are deficient in. And so it's highly purified, no fish burps, all that good stuff, I take it every day. Uh, if you go to shop.galvisondiet.com, or again, the supplement link is up here. Um, I also have a fiber supplement. It is a combination of soluble and insoluble fiber, both of which are very important. Diets rich in fiber greater than 25 grams per day, which is the recommended daily amount of fiber have women who have diets rich natural sources of fiber not supplement have been shown to have decreased heart disease decreased breast cancer decreased hot flashes decreased menopausal symptoms i get 25 because i eat an avocado a day um, which also has health benefits by the way so if you love avocado enjoy healthy fats fiber water vitamins minerals nutrients so i push to 35 grams per day with my fiber intake and i do that using my supplement um, fiber, of course, bulks up the stool. We all know that increases the transit time. Sorry, decreases transit time. Um, so you have less exposure of potential toxins. However, it also the soluble fiber feeds your gut microbiome, keeps the gut microbiome healthy, which keeps the gut brain axis working a lot happier and healthier. It's so, 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 so important. Our fiber is a powder. You mix in water. I drink it all afternoon. This is just regular water. I'm fasting right now. But after I break my fast, I will mix my fiber and my collagen in here. The other thing we have is collagen. So many benefits of collagen, guys. Besides the vanity things I like it for, which is wrinkles and cellulite, um, it also helps uh, this particular, uh, helps women who took the supplement had stronger bones. It decreases the risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia. So um, check them out, galvestondiet.com. Go to supplements or go up here to the link. Everybody double tap the screen to like the video. Um, HCG for weight loss during menopause, that is a scam. That is a scam. That is a scam. That is a scam. Please do not take exogenous hormones to lose weight. Guys, HCG, you are being sold a bill of goods. Stop it. Don't harm your body. You are not meant to be pregnant in postmenopause. Do not give your body or human chorionic gonadotrophin. You're only asking for trouble. This is not sustainable. This is not the way to your best health. This is not the way for you to be able to pick up and play with those grandbabies and climb mountains at 70. It is not doing HCG injections for weight loss. Stop focusing on the scale as a measure of health. Stop. Um, there are no benefits of MCT oil. My God, you guys have been 
Woo, y'all are being sold a bill of goods. Um, what makes someone not a good candidate for hormone replacement therapy? Breast, active breast cancer, that is estrogen receptor positive, no, um, or progesterone receptor positive. A, prime, a first degree relative, sister or mother with early stage, with early age onset of estrogen receptor. If you have a known genetic issue, if you have active heart disease, if you have active liver disease, if you've had a blood clot while pregnant or on hormones, all, and that one's kind of iffy because definitely you can't take birth control pills, but the new data coming out looks like it is safe for you to take HRT, but again, that's an individual decision between you and your physician. Okay, everyone, double tap the screen, quick, 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 like this video. This is uh, gonna help me drive the algorithm. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, board certified ob -Gen. We are answering questions about menopause. Drop them in this interact button down below. I will get to them. Um, you're on progesterone and testosterone, but not estrogen. Why? Why? The greatest thing you could do for your health in postmenopause is to have estrogen, and you're not taking it. Why did your doctor not offer it? That is scary as hell to me. Um, Galveston diet doctor trained by Dr. MCH. Uh, I don't know what that question means, guys. Okay, give me a little more information, and I'll, I'll get to it. So. What is the difference between hormone replacement therapy and birth control? Okay, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but all of it falls under hormone therapy, okay? Birth control pills were created for people not to get pregnant. They are used for cramps, heavy periods, acne, irregular periods, you name it, okay? Multiple, multiple non-contraceptive benefits to hormone therapy, okay? The difference between traditional birth control pills and hormone replacement therapy is dosage, okay? It's basically the same medicine. So we have ethanol estradiol, conjugated equine estrogens, or eth, um, est estradiol, which are the estrogens. There's a million progestins, I'm not gonna list them all. Um, that's it. Notice, I did not say testosterone. Testosterone is not a thing in hormone therapy in medicine when we're OB-GYNs. It is something that is marketed and made up by a very, very wealthy billionaire in Dallas who made BioT, decided to try to sell it to women with exaggerated claims. Good luck, ladies. Okay, um, I am a fan of testosterone and a very small subset of women who are having difficulty with desire issues, who are postmenopausal. They might be a good candidate for it, but all the other claims are not substantiated. Go look it up. Go look it up before you put something potentially dangerous in your body. Um, okay. Uh, I'm answering questions. We need advice on low libido. Okay, write this down. Everybody get your pencils. Somebody type it out so they can screenshot. Dr. Kelly Casperson. Dr. Kelly Casperson. You are not broken podcast. Somebody type it out in the comments so y'all can screenshot it. She is the motherfucking bomb. There's nobody better in this space. I highly advise you go listen to her podcasts, okay? You Are Not Broken by Dr. Kelly Casperson. It is a podcast. You can follow her on Instagram. You can follow her on TikTok. You can follow her on Facebook, okay? Dr. Kelly Casperson, K-E-L-L-Y-C-A-S-P-E-R-S-O-N. She is a urologist. She has devoted her life to women's female function, libido, and she is so much better than me. I literally ask her questions all the time. <laughs> And um, she, this is her jam. This is her jam. I don't pretend to be an expert in this. It would literally take over my practice, okay? So Dr. Kelly Casperson, You Are Not Broken podcast. Okay. Um, oh, UTIs and estrogen cream, whoop, whoop. Oh, y'all, okay. You suffer from recurrent UTIs in menopause and perimenopause? The number one thing you need is not antibiotics. The number one treatment, the number one thing that is gonna help you more than anything else to get rid of these recurrent UTIs. Vaginal estrogen. Vaginal estrogen. That's it. Vaginal estrogen does not carry the same risk as systemic estrogen. I think every single woman is a candidate for vaginal estrogen. It keeps the pelvic floor healthy. It keeps the vaginal mucosa thick. It keeps it velvety. It keeps it mucus. It keeps the bladder neck healthy. 
You're getting recurrent UTIs, not because you're dirty or you have bad hygiene or whatever's going on, because that tissue is unhealthy because you don't have any estrogen down there. Put the estrogen back and you'll get healthy again and the UTIs will stop, will stop. Huge fan, ask your doctor, demand it, demand it. Okay. Uh, yes, I am still planning to put the doctor list out. We are in the process of still collecting more names and verifying them. It takes a while. We have to call the office, talk to the office manager, make sure they're okay with being on the list. And then our IT people are now building the interface so that you can search on area. So hopefully, we're hopefully you know, mid-May should be coming out with our referral list. And it's all driven by you. It's all driven by my followers who have wonderful menopause providers who want to share their good luck, <laughs> really it's luck at this point, with a sister in their community so that they know that there's a safe place that they can go to get good menopausal care. So yes, but it takes a long time. It took a lot longer than we thought. If you have one and you want to refer, go to Dr. Mary Claire up here to the link in bio and click on it and please fill out the form uh, give us as much information some people put like dr smith kaiser that is hard for us to go find dr smith at kaiser give us as much information as possible if you can find the link to their website drop it in there that'll speed things up for us so much faster um okay uh if you want to make an appointment with me go check me out at maryclairewellness.com or um, just go up here to the link in bio and you can find us there. If you think you're in perimenopause and you are not sure, hang on one second, um, uh, go take our perimenopause quiz. It's free. Um, you can, um, it's at the link here. It will tell you the likelihood that your constellation of symptoms are related to perimenopause. It will then ask for your email. We don't have to give it. And in those emails will be a ton of information from me to you, a gift. So you can have an informed conversation with your healthcare provider as to what your treatment options are, what labs you need, and how to best maximize your healthcare during this time of your life. Um, let's see. Let's see. No period since November, sleepless nights. You're perimenopausal. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I would bet, I don't know how old you are, but I would say we're getting close to 100% chance that you are perimenopausal. Go take our quiz. Go take our quiz. Um, Okay, remember, drop your questions in the question box. What if you take nothing? That is your right. That is your right. You don't have to take anything. But you need to know that you are increasing your risk of all-cause mortality. You're increasing your risk of osteoporosis. You're increasing your risk of colorectal cancer. You're increasing your risk of vaginal dryness, of vaginal atrophy, of painful intercourse, and decreased libido. All of those things. But you don't have to take it. You don't have to take antibiotics. You don't have to take chemotherapy. You can choose not to, but you will run risks because of it. Let's see. Uh, magnesium. I love magnesium. We are not getting enough magnesium as a culture. <laughs> I eat pumpkin seeds almost every day so I can make sure I get enough magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral that in super physiologic doses can actually be pharmacologic. It's a very calming um, it helps uh, calm, so it helps with um, magnesium L3 and 8, my favorite, favorite kind, helps with SSRI resistant depression. It worked just as, you know, it, it actually helped those patients. It helps with sleep, it helps with anxiety, it helps with depression. I'm a huge, huge fan of magnesium. Okay. All right, guys, uh, give me a bunch of likes, 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 likes. Um, and I'm going to jump off. My voice hurts from talking so much. Um, look, my little deconstructing therapist. She's such a good moderator. She does it because she loves me. <laughs> um, all right. And I am going to jump off. Of course, I will come back soon. You guys, thank you so much. And we will chat again very quick soon.